Hey everyone and welcome to this tutorial in ZBrush on how to use the extract function and the matchmaker brush in order to conform objects to geometry in your scene. We're going to start using the DynaWax 128 ZPR file, just a simple DynaWax ball here. We've got it here in the scene and I'm going to start off by showing you guys how to use the extract function in order to create and conform geometry to more sophisticated shapes but we're gonna we're gonna do this one on a sphere and then when we use the matchmaker brush i'm going to show you guys how to do this on a different contour type of geometry specifically like a cloth start out i'm going to select uh, my mask brush and i'm going to do this mask square because i want to create like a square patch so i'm going to draw out a a cube here or a square mask and and while holding control if i hold the space bar i can drag it over my sphere i could have drawn it over there because it is the mask square and it's going to draw a square every time but we're i'm just you know doing it this way why not all right so i'm gonna let go of that there's my square now if you're not quite happy with your selection because of the the dynamesh one thing you can do because the sphere subdivision levels really don't matter i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to i'm going to clear that mask and I'm gonna divide my mesh one more time. And now we're gonna draw that mask back out. Boom, a lot smoother. All right, so back to the sub tool menu. I'm gonna go over here to extract and I'm gonna turn my, my sphere a little bit so I can see the thickness of my extraction. Since it's set to 0 0.02, I've got double turned on so it's a double sided geometry uh, that's gonna be created. And I'm just gonna hit extract and it's gonna show me the approximate thickness. Now, because my mask, the way I drew it, since it was a drag and drop type mask, it masks through the other side. If I don't want that there, this is not set yet. In fact, when I rotate my camera, it goes away. So I can just come over here, hold Control and Alt, and I'm gonna draw out another mask to cover that one and clear it out there. All right, so let's do that again. Um, I'm not, really happy with the the 0 0.02 thickness so i'm going to go down here and set it to 0 0.06 hit enter and hit extract all right so that's a little bit better a lot thicker i'm going to end up pushing that in anyway so uh it's it's fine where it's at so this i'm, I'm happy with this extraction i'm going to go ahead and hit accept it creates a new piece of geometry it's got a mask on like clear that mask out I can even hit uh, Shift F for my polyframe. You can see here I have several polyframes. I've got my border. They put the colors kind of close together, so we can change that. There we go. So now you can see there's separate poly groups there, and that's that's the quick and dirty. That's that's right there done. So even if I have a more complex shape, if I can draw a mask on it then I can extract a part from it and work from there. So this is the first method. The next one, we're gonna take a little bit farther. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn that one off. And I'm gonna jump down here to this other shape I have in here, kind of like a cloth contoured shape. It's not, you know, it would be a tongue, I guess, but uh, we're gonna call it a clover cape. All right, so with this shape here, I'm gonna turn my polyframe back off so you guys can see. It's got pretty even thickness. It's just a, it started as a sphere and I just shaped it into this. So nothing extraordinary. Uh, I could mask this. I could, I could go ahead and mask my cube here. And I could, you can see it's not the sharpest. So I'd want to probably sharpen that up, but I could use the extraction method here. Instead, we are going to use a brush that I think probably doesn't get the amount of attention that it should. Uh, the Matchmaker brush is an amazing brush in ZBrush. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to append a cube 3D. I'm going to select that cube and turn my polyframe back on. Turn solo off. Turn that guy back on there so you can see. All right, so this is the cube. It's got the poles at the top and bottom that ZBrush creates by default. It's not ideal. So I'm going to run down here to my initialize. 
And I'm just gonna hit Q cube with a resolution of two, two and two in the X, Y, and Z. There it is. I'm gonna activate my move brush with W. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this guy a little less thickness. I'm gonna scale him up some. I'm gonna go ahead and move him out here so we can see what we're doing too. So I'm gonna scale him up a bit. Make him a little bit thinner like that. And I'm going to duplicate this guy because I need stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate him. And we're gonna go back down to geometry here. I need some divisions, but I don't wanna smooth right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit divide uh, about four times. Then I'm gonna turn smooth on, divide again. If I turn off this other cube here, you'll see there we go. It's got a little bit of rounded corners. That's fine. I turn the poly frame off and back on. You can see all of the polygons around there now. So this should be a, enough. And this is, it, it's important to remember that you need to have resolution subdivisions, uh, not necessarily subdivisions, but you need to have a good amount of polygons in order for this to work because it's going to try to push the polygons around the contour of whatever other objects in the scene. So we're gonna take this and I'm gonna actually grab this guy back here and I'm gonna move him down. So I wanna position this piece basically where I want uh, the cube to contour around. So we're gonna set it over to this side. I don't want it right in the middle there. We're gonna set it over to this side from this front view here. So go back to my cube. And a cool little trick, if you wanna just switch between objects and you don't already know this, if you hold the Alt button and click on an object, it will cycle between those. So you don't always have to go back and forth to your tool, uh, your subtool palette over there. All right, so with that, like that, I'm gonna turn this guy back on, select him. This is the original cube. Um, and before I divide this, I'm gonna change its dimensions. I'm gonna scale it in uh, X, make it a little bit thinner. And then I'm gonna scale it down this way from Y. And this is gonna be our stitching. It's gonna go around the edges. And, and this being, you know, keeping in mind, this is for like 3D printing miniatures uh, type work. I'm gonna go ahead and bump that out a bit. So there's a little bit of uh, um, a uh, contour there. So that'll show up in a 3D print. And then I'm gonna hold down control and I'm going to drag in the Y down and it's gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna hold, uh, I'm going to uh, hold control again. And in the X, I'm gonna drag this over, let go of control. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. You can hold shift to lock in those, those rotation uh, uh, adjustments there. And then I'm gonna move this up and over to the side. And I'm gonna hold control again, grabbing the, the green manipulator here, which is the Y. I'm gonna move it over this way, even though we're moving in, in X technically. And I'm gonna place it right there. All right, so now we have our stitches. i turn my Gizmo 3D off. I'm going to clear my mask, but I'm gonna need some divisions in here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn smooth off Divide it about four times and then turn smooth on and divide again. Okay, so you do not have to delete your subdivision levels to use the matchmaker brush. Uh, you can if you'd like, but you don't have to. So with that set, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna look at where my object is. I'm gonna select this guy here and I'm gonna move him a little bit closer. It's not necessary because it's going to contour to this shape no matter what, but I just like it. It moves, it means I have to move these guys a little bit less to get them where they need to be. So with that, I'm gonna select that, the uh, main center cube, the patch here. I'm gonna turn off anything else I don't want Matchmaker to use or to, to project to. I'm gonna press B to open my brush menu, M for Matchmaker. You can see it's right here. So if I press M again, that's what the M is for, it'll activate the matchmaker brush. 
You wanna make sure that symmetry is turned off. If symmetry is on, it's gonna double the intensity of your matchmaker brush. And we're gonna take this, I'm gonna place it right over the center here of my object, and I'm gonna click and drag out, and you'll see like a wave passes over it. And it has contoured this to match the area directly behind here. And it might look like a little extreme, it's all right, um, because what we're gonna do, we're gonna end up putting this on the mesh anyway. So one thing you do wanna watch for is you see how it got really thin right here. So we're gonna undo that real quick and see if we can't curb that, um, that shift a little bit. And that could be because of the contour here. Remember, this is also camera based. So if I were to turn my camera this way and also rotate, my object this way a little bit. This is a little bit of freehand trick here. Uh, and it's gonna be, uh, well, it's gonna be a little difficult with the stitches, but that's fine. We'll turn that off, I'm gonna run it again. Because it is contingent on your image uh, or your camera view, if I look at it now, that's a lot better. That is uh, giving me a much better result. I can take this and just push it right back into the mesh. And it looks pretty even all the way around. So that contours it to, um, to my mesh there. So now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna turn these guys on, select them. And they're a little bit off, that's fine. So I'm gonna find my angle here. And I'm squaring up with my square, which is convenient. I'm gonna center this so it rotates properly and, and make sure I hit the rotation. There we go. Rotate it so that it is approximately square as well. I'm now gonna turn that cube off because I don't want Matchmaker to match to that cube. I want it to match to the object behind it. So now I'm gonna hover my mouse over one of these, not the center, but over one of these, and pull, drag out, and you'll see it runs over it. Now you can see that it has matched those to the contour. I can grab my move brush. I can even turn this guy back on here. And now I'm just gonna grab the Z manipulator and push it right back into my uh, object there. I'm gonna turn off my polyframe, and now you can see I've got my contoured patch on the mesh. Now, this needs a little bit of refinement. There's some areas where it's not quite perfect, but that could be because of the way that I sculpted the mesh. But this is a great way to get objects on there, or, again, by using extraction. So, if you guys have any questions about this tutorial, please leave them in the comments. Uh, feel free to drop me a message and look forward to more tutorials in the future and we'll see you in the next video.